Hey y'all, welcome to the Messy Studio. Come on in and see what's going on. Hey y'all, I was hoping to come back with another turning project, but that's not gonna happen because I got an order to duplicate this. So, stay with me and see how I do it. This is not going to be your typical router carved sign, unfortunately. I was kind of hoping that's what he wanted, but he actually wants me to make basically a desktop replica of this about 25 inches wide. So, should be fun. Stick with me and see how it happens. First thing I have to do is prep the wood. Oh, and I'm testing out this zoom with a lapel mic so that I can hopefully get better audio and reduce some of my background noise. We'll see. Okay, I've got these pieces cut to length now. Now I need to cut them to width so that I can glue them together. Trying to keep things a little less messy by sweeping everything into the trash bin. I didn't have one of those at the old shop, didn't have room for it. Here I'm laying out the boards in the order in which I'm going to glue them together to form the panel. And I mark the boards with a carpenter's triangle so I don't get them mixed up. I do the same for the boards that I'm going to use in the back. Once I've got them identified and marked, it's time to glue them into panels. You notice that I'm lining my clamps with blue painters tape so the glue squeeze out doesn't stain or otherwise get on my clamps I'd have to clean them up later Now that the panels are glued up and out of the clamps, I take them back to the table saw to square them up. Here I'm trimming the picture to just the size that I'm going to be carving so I can glue it onto the panel. It's at this point that I realized that because this is an actual photograph that I'm working from and that I've blown up, the proportion is a little bit off and it's not really square and what I'm working with is a square piece so and it needs to be square so I'm going to make some minor adjustments by taking the photograph apart because I printed it on multiple pieces of paper so I'm going to make some take some minor adjustments and square the actual photo up and then I'll take my colored markers and mark what needs to be cut or carved so that I know where to follow my lines with my router I will actually go so far as to color in everything that's going to be carved with the router. The words on the front are going to be cut from a separate piece of thin wood and actually glued onto the top. So the only thing I'm going to be carving is everything under the words Welcome to Polson. So I draw out and color everything that all the same color so I know what layer to cut with my router first. For example, the very background where the yellow and the red and the brown down at the bottom is, that's going to be the deepest part. The second deepest part are going to be the black trees that you see up at the top. The teepees 
will sit flush with the frame that's going to be carved uh, inside. So basically I've got two carved levels down inside the sign. Now that I have the picture like I want it, I'm going to cover the top board with blue painter's tape because the adhesive on the tape doesn't leave a residue on the board when I peel it off. If I was to just spray the back of the picture with the 3M adhesive or just spray the board with the 3M adhesive, that adhesive doesn't come off very well and it leaves a residue that I would have to either try to sand off or use acetone or something on. It's easier just to put the blue tape down then I can spray the back of the picture or the blue tape, stick the picture to the blue tape, and we'll go from there. Once I have the picture glued onto the board over the blue tape, I take clear packing tape and tape over the picture. That lets the router slide across the, the, the picture easier. And the vinyl and the tape actually lubricates the bit a little bit. Once I have the clear packing tape on, I take a plastic putty knife and go over the entire picture real well, pressing down to make sure that I get everything secure. Not only the packing tape over the picture, but the adhesive underneath the picture onto the blue tape. Once that's done, I can take it over to the bench and start carving. I start the routing by routing the outline of the frame and then all of the pieces within the sign using a profile bit. Once the outline is all finished, then I switch to an eighth inch spiral upcut bit, flat bottom, and start routing out the deepest of the backgrounds. Alright, I've got to apologize guys. The memory card got full and y'all have seen enough of my videos to know that I don't, I, I have a hard time stopping for stuff like that when I'm on a roll. So what you missed was me routing or the outline for the top part of the frame here. And once I got that routed in, I took it over to the bandsaw and cut that off and then I Actually, I don't know if you saw me glue the panels together. You might not have. So I, I glued the back and the front on. Then I routed this. Then I took it to the bandsaw and cut it off. And then I sanded these with my uh, oscillating spindle sander. So I've still got to sand these. I'll use my Dremel for that. 
and I started just to test it to see how it would look laying in some of these you see these indentions on the on the pattern on the picture I'm duplicating those I'm pairing them out with a chisel and then I'll go back in with a set of files and smooth them up and then I'll start painting so that's what you missed okay you can see here I've got a flush trim bit installed in the router I'm gonna flush trim to make all the sides even these three sides here this side's already done so I'm gonna flush trim these Okay, there's no point in having you watch me do the rest of this. You've seen me do a few already. I'm going to finish this up off camera and I'll come back. Well, it should be pretty obvious. I'm a woodworker, not a painter. I blended this the best I could. It's just going to have to do. I took a center punch and I marked these holes where these were. I'm going to put some. There was pegs in the original. I guess I don't know to hold it together or what, or be decorative. So I'm gonna take some, I measured those, they're 3 16ths of an inch. I've got some 3 8 inch dowel, 3 16 dowel. I'm gonna drill these out, probably, I don't know, quarter inch deep. And then I'll glue some pieces of dowel in there and round over the edges. Right now, I'm gonna cut these two lines with my profile bit. To give you an idea how confusing this can be sometimes, see this spot in here in between the TPs? I need to carve that down to this level. I overlooked that because of the all the colored tape on it, but no big deal. That's easy to take care of. But before I do that, I'm going to finish taking this tape off of these poles and use this bit to clean up around them because I can see some places that need to be taken care of. Before I go any further, I'm going to carve my name and logo into the back.
Okay, the camera messed up on me yesterday. It wouldn't load the memory card. I just really didn't have time to try to fix it. Uh, I have fixed it now. It's ready to go. I don't know what the deal was. It just, I, I tried for 30 minutes to get it to recognize the memory card and it wouldn't do it. I went ahead and finished the painting. I got the brown in. I painted the black. I took the tape and design off the teepees. I was going to paint these and try to match the color in the sign, but it's just not going to happen. So I, I couldn't get a good color. I tried several times. So I decided it's they're going they look better left natural wood. I painted these small letters white. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this off since I've got all everything cut into it that needs to be. I'm going to take this off and I'm actually going to dye this with brown sole dressing. It works really well. It's an alcohol based dye. It's made for leather really, but it works well on wood as well. Once I get this taken off and I get this dyed, then what I will do is start working on the words welcome to Polson. That's going to be a little different. I'm going to scroll saw those. So let's get at it. Before I forget, you can see here that I added my name, logo, and the date on the back and painted it. I'm waiting on the dye to dry. I'm going to start working on these uprights. Once I get them cut to size, I'm going to have to cut a dado in the middle to accept those panels. And I haven't decided if I'm going to do that on the router table or do it free. I'll probably do it on the router table since I can put a stop on it, drop it in and go. Uh, cut a half inch channel. Actually not quite a half inch, but let me get these cut to length. I got to cut them to 14 inches and we'll start doing something else. got full while I was doing it as frequently seems to happen and what you missed was making the final marks on this board and me cutting these at the angle to match the picture I did that using my actually I did this taper using this tapering jig uh, I've read a number of reviews where people say they don't like this it puts things a little too close to the blade etc etc it doesn't in this case and it worked just fine 
So now I'm going to go ahead and take the chisel and finish paring these out and then I'll turn it over and just do some random throughout. So let's get at it. Some of the cuts go all the way to the back if you look at the photograph. So I'm going to make those cuts at the bandsaw. hazards of pairing with a hand chisel. Busted blister. I guess I should have been wearing a glove. I routed these dados using my router table. It took a long time to set it up and get it right and then I forgot to hit the record button when I was ready to go. I also routed the chamfer that goes underneath the feet. So now I can start putting stuff together maybe. I've still got a cut the words out on the scroll saw, but I'm getting closer here. I'm probably gonna drill a hole straight through this and then make me a mark in the bottom of this and use a dowel and, and glue to hold that in place. So we're getting there. So this is what it's gonna look like. I've still gotta stain this and file these better. So I'm gonna file these up, stain it the same color as this with that leather die and then glue it together after I glue the words on. So now I've got to go to the scroll saw and cut the words out. Before I do that though, I'll probably sit down at the bench and take some time to clean all of this up and put the die on it. You don't need to watch me do that. Let's see how bad we can screw up with this cheap scroll saw. Now the blue letters, I'm not going to be able to, to scroll saw these out because I need a quarter inch hole in here to saw the middle out and because of the saw blades that I have to use. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this apart of course because the bottom is fine. So what I'm going to do, see like that, is I'm just going to take this and I'm going to tack them with double stick tape or something to a piece of scrap, plywood probably, these two, and then I'll just cut these out with a router. I know I can do that. So that'll come later. Now, and cut the individual letters out. So let's do it. 
Okay, let's cut the big letters out now and then we'll go on to the small ones. Okay, I've got the the picture itself glued into the uprights and I've got those screwed on with two in two three inch deck screws on each side I still need to put the the letters on here but before I do that I have to glue the letters to their backgrounds and that's what we're going to do now so let's get at it these set up overnight and I'll glue them to the sign tomorrow morning okay now it's time to position these and glue them on so I've got to figure out exactly where I want it Got that done now, I'll come back in a few hours. <laughs> I want to let that dry pretty good. Come back in a few hours and put the first coat of finish on it. So here's the completed sign. Does it look enough like the picture? I think so. But you can be the judge. Now all I have to do is put a finish coat on it. I'm going to spray this with a water-based poly. To seal the colors in I don't want to brush them on and risk running the colors they shouldn't run but I don't want to take any chances so I'm going to spray the first coat and then I'll brush the next two or three coats on 
and then I can take this to him. she is all done finish all around a couple of coats three and another project down please like subscribe share with your friends i really appreciate it helps us out a lot come back and see us next time you never know what we're going to be up to here at the messy studio